In this video, you will be introduced to the Masoretic Vowel System as used in the Hebrew Bible. The alphabet as developed by the Phoenicians and then later adapted by Aramaic and Hebrew speakers originally had only consonants. Over time, certain letters started being used in Aramaic and then Hebrew to represent vowels as well as being used as consonants. These are the He, the Vav, and the Yod. These vowel letters, or matris lexionis, were then combined with other markers to represent long vowels by the Masoretes. Those Masoretes, the medieval scribes, developed an additional system of vowel points that represented their reading tradition. Different geographical regions developed different systems. We use the system developed in Tiberias, or the Tiberian system. Now, the vowels are usually divided into short vowels, long or lengthened vowels, and then the true long vowels, which are written with the matris lexionis. And then there's a set of what we call reduced vowels. So first of all, the short vowels include five different vowels representing A, E, I, O, U sounds. So the patach is an A vowel written as a line underneath the consonant, pronounced an, as an A as in the word man. The segol, combination of three dots, is pronounced as an E as in met. The chirik, or the I vowel, is pronounced E as in machine. The chamatz hatuf is an O vowel, the O as in hot, kind of an aw sound, and it's written as a small t. The kibbutz is a U vowel, the U as in flute, written as three dots on a horizontal, on a, on a diagonal. The long or lengthened vowels are comets, which is written in transliteration as an A with a line over the top or a macron over the top. And it looks exactly like the kamatsa tuf with as a small t underneath the consonant. And we'll be discussing um, when you can recognize either a kamatsa or a kamatsa tuf. This is pronounced A as in father. The tsere, transliterated as an E with a line over the top, or two dots underneath the consonant in Hebrew, is an A sound as in they. The cholem, the O with a macron on the top in transliteration, and in Hebrew as a dot above the letter to the left is pronounced O as in mole. The long vowels with matris lexionis consist of a comet's hay with an A as in father, sort of pronounced exactly the same as the comets, and it has an A with a little sort of upside down V in transliteration. The tsere yod is a combination of the tsere followed by a yod. These are two different marks, but they're pronounced the same as one vowel, an A sound, A as in they. The chirik yod is written as a chirik with the yod following. It's pronounced as one vowel, and it is pronounced as an E, as in machine. The cholem vav combines the vav with that sign of the cholem, which, remember, was written over the left upper side 
of a consonant, and it is pronounced O as in mole. Now, the, sh the shuruk is a little bit different. Um, it consists of a vowel with a dot in the middle, and is, it is pronounced U as in flute. The fourth class of vowels are the reduced vowels, and we will be discussing uh, what we mean by that in another video. The reduced vowels can, are basically forms of what is called schwa. Schwa or schwa, you will find it used sometimes in other languages as well, can kind of be a kind of a throwaway vowel. It doesn't get much weight in translation. This vocal schwa is kind of a uh sound. It doesn't really get uh, much weight, and it's two vertical dots transliterated as an upside down E. It can also indicate uh, what is called a silent schwa, which is not transliterated or pronounced, and basically acts as a stopper for syllables. Now the gutturals we learned don't always behave the same as other consonants. And they don't like this simple uh, vocal schwa. So when they take schwa, they combine it with, uh, with one of the short vowels. So a guttural, when it has a reduced vowel, an A vowel, and notice that these are marked with little scoops on the top, will combine it with a patak. So patak plus schwa. A chatef patach, pronounced a as in man. The chatef segol, which is a segol plus shava, an e as in met. And then the chamatz hatuf, um, with a chatef, uh, comets, is a, a little chamatz hatuf plus shava, a as in hot. We will be discussing syllables at length in another video, but just sort of a brief introduction right now. In Hebrew, at least in Masoretic Hebrew, all syllables are either two sounds or three sounds. So either consonant and vowel, in which case the syllable is called open, or consonant, vowel, consonant, in which case it is closed. There is word stress in Hebrew. It is usually the last syllable, but if not, the stressed syllable is marked by an accent. All other syllables within a word will be unstressed. Short vowels tend to be in closed, unstressed syllables. Long vowels tend to be in open or stressed syllables. And we'll look at that much later in much greater detail. Now, we mentioned that the schwa can either be vocal or silent. It is usually vocal when it comes after a long vowel. So you'll notice here you have the cholim, which is a long vowel. So this would be shofatim. Here the, the shava is pronounced. Where you have two shavas in a word, the second one is vocal. So this word, this would be year maya. Notice m, m, that a uh, throwaway vowel is pronounced. And it is vocal when it is under the first letter of the word. Yehuda. In most other cases, the shiva is silent.
Now the gutturals, remember they don't behave like other consonants. They mostly prefer A vowels. Along with the resh, they cannot be doubled. And we'll be looking at this later as well. Sometimes the dagesh, which we ran into when we were talking about the Bagad Kafat letters, can occur in other consonants and in the Bagad Kafat letters in situations where what's happening is that the consonant is being doubled. But the gutturals and the resh do not like being doubled, and so they do not take a dagesh. The gutturals take compound schwas, as we just saw, and these are always pronounced, even when they close a syllable. Aleph is not pronounced when it ends a syllable and does not take a silent shiva. This is called a quiescent olive. There is a concept that we call, just for fun, a sneaky patach. When an ayin, a chet, or a he with a dot in it, this he with a dot in it, it the, the dot is called a mapik. When these appear at the end of a word, and uh, these consonants are not preceded by an A vowel, a patach appears underneath the guttural. So, for example, we would expect in normal situations that this word here would be pronounced ruch, but because it ends with a chet, and the chets like A vowels, an A vowel is placed underneath, but pronounced in front of it. So, ruach. Or here we have a situation we would normally expect the pronunciation elo, but because the hay with the dot in it, the hay ma peak, is preceded by an O vowel, an A vowel, the patak, is placed underneath it, and the pronunciation of the word is eloa, eloa. So it's written underneath the consonant, but is pronounced before it. Some words properly would take a long vowel with a vowel letter, a uh, matris lexionis. When it appears this way, it is called a full spelling. When it appears without the vowel letter, it is called defective. So we would expect that David, the, the name of David, we would expect it to be written David with a chirik yod, with a long vowel. But most often when it appears in the Hebrew Bible, it appears without the yod. It appears with just the chirik. And yet, what's in the background here historically is the chirik yod, is a long vowel. So it is written David, and it is called a defective spelling.